Been on the sidelines for a long time Now I'm finally getting in the game It's about time This is my time This is my time The only thing I consider impossible is losing I've been waiting on the sidelines for a long time Now I'm finally getting in the game It's about time This is my time This is my time The only thing I consider impossible is losing Hit that like button. Let's hit that like button. I've been waiting on the sidelines for a long time. Now I'm finally getting in the game. It's about time. This is my time. This is my time. The only thing I consider impossible is losing. I've been waiting on the sidelines for a long time. Now I'm finally getting in the game. It's about Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. This is TD Fans Talk, home of the real Miami Dolphin fans. I'm so excited. I am less than 24 hours away from welcoming my baby girl into this world. So um, I'm excited about that. The wife is excited. We had a little scare this morning, you know, waking up like four in the morning. Oh, I might be having contractions, you know, that type of stuff. Just nervous. <laughs> it was nothing. Um. So everything is still on for tomorrow, scheduled as usual. Um, not as usual, but as it's supposed to be. Um, I hope everybody's doing good today, man. We didn't have football yesterday for ourselves, but we had it for the league. The league tore it up. It was a great day to watch football. Tonight we got the Rams and San Francisco 49ers. I'm not going to call this whole game. Um, I want to talk about Tua, Teddy, Skyler, Reed, Sinet, everything you need to know. We're going to break that down and more. Before we get started, we're going to um, take a look at our sponsor prize picks because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Your boy hit him hard last night, man. I got to show you all my winnings from last night. Shout out to prize picks. Let me let me go ahead and hook you all up real quick. Let me show you all. I, I, I got him last night, man. I got him last night. Look what your boy did last night. So I, I bet $30 to win $300 on my five pick. I put $30 on it to win $300. And as you can see, I won. I had Mike Evans over 67 and a half yards. He had 103, crushed it. 
I had Chris Godwin over 39 and a half, 59, crushed it. I had Clyde Edwards Hilaire over 55 and a half, all purpose yards, whether it was receptions or rushing, and he crushed it with 94. And I had Patrick Mahomes 2.5 or more. That was the one I was nervous about, but I got three from Patrick Mahomes. All right. Tom Brady, 25 pass completions. He <laughs> had 39. So I crushed that as well, man. I crushed that as well. Um, man, so 300 easy ones, 300 easy ones. I'm about to withdraw. I'm probably going to withdraw soon and go donate to, um, you know, probably a homeless person or something like that. That's what I like to do with my winnings, um, bless somebody else. So I'll probably withdraw a little lump sum. Oh, I got another one in tonight. I got another one in tonight. So let me show you what I got in tonight. All right, let me see. Open entries. I got Jimmy G over 216. I got um, Debo over 57. I got Cooper Cup over 94. And I got Matthew Stafford two touchdowns tonight. Yeah, so hopefully I hit that, get another 300. You know, um, yeah, man. TTD doing good, man. I, I, I done came up a little bit, man. I done came up a little bit. <laughs> I'm homeless. Uh, hey, hey, man. Hey, listen, man. Um, I, 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 I do my best to bless those that I can bless, man. At the end of the day, prize picks, I enjoy playing it because it's, it gets you your skin boiling and stuff, and it's pretty fun for me, man. So when I win some, I'll take some of it and make sure I bless somebody with it, man. Um, but there are a lot of homeless people out there, man. I will say that um used to volunteer at a shelter so um hey whatever way you can find to bless somebody you do so but again if you want to sign up for prize picks go ahead and they will match your first deposit up to a hundred percent all right use code fins talk all right they will match your first deposit up to a hundred percent up to one hundred dollars all right up to one hundred dollars do a giveaway, TD, LOL. Uh, we can do that, too. You know, we can do that, too. Because a lot of people, I mean, you'd be surprised, bro. It'd be people watching the stream. They struggling, and $50, $100 could bless them, too. That's why I said what I what I plan on doing is seeing how much I can win, and by the end of the season, um, try to, you know, give something to the homeless and do a giveaway. But just like fantasy, you know, um, if I win fantasy, that means everybody else lost and I'll take the winnings and maybe do a giveaway or something like that. So, but right now we're up to 382. It was over $382 right now. It was over 400, but I just put this bet in. So we'll see how it goes. Somebody said TD is betting a sin. That's, well, from my understanding, um, the Bible does not say that it's a sin. Um, so some might say that it's foolish um, unless like for me, I don't play to try to come up and pay my bills. So it's more recreational for me. Um, but no, um, from my understanding of studying, no, it's not. Okay. Just FYI. Um, TD, uh, what about Sinet? We're going to talk about that. It's, it's time to talk about that and so much more. All right. So two is on the shelf. Two is on the shelf. All right. Got a stroller. Yeah, we got a stroller. All right. Two is on the shelf. Let me let me talk about Tua Tagovailoa first. Let me see, I'm feeling cool today. Let me talk about Tua Tagovailoa first. Um, first and foremost, um, Tua. Um, I don't like this whole process. They don't know how long Tua is going to be out. Let me be clear with y'all. Tua could play Sunday. He can play Sunday. He's passing protocols right now. OK, they didn't say he was failing them. He's passing them now. That's why I tried to tell you all in the last stream I did. This is bigger than that. This is bigger than that. This is not about, you know, passing a protocol. At the end of the day, all the experts know that I can go get a concussion right now. And 30 minutes later, I pass the protocol. But that doesn't mean next week I need to be on the field. Put myself at risk of another concussion. Um, so here's the deal. He can play. They're not going to play him because it looks bad for the NFL. And it does. 
The only reason Tua Tagovailoa is not playing is because it looks bad for the NFL. It's that simple. They're making a statement with Tua, trying to show what we're doing the right thing. He's not playing this week. We'll evaluate him after that. They'll probably bring him back the very next week. Now, some in NFL corners, um, they believe that Tua is going to be out for the rest of the year. I'm hearing that. I'm not buying it. I am hearing that Tua Tagovailoa likely is to be, will be out for the rest of the season, and I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. But there is a possibility. I'm not going to discount it because if the NFL can get with the Dolphins and say, man, let's sit the kid. We need it for the league. They may. You know why? Because the NFL knows if Tua goes back out there, he might get another concussion. If he get a third one at any point of this season, it is going to be the worst look for the NFL, period. And they know that he is prone to him now. And oh, he already had two back-to-back. -back, and you I don't care if it's the last game of the season. He get his third. It is a terrible look for the NFL. Terrible. Terrible. If it was up to the NFL, Tua ain't playing no more this year. We'll try it next year. But the truth is, the way that their protocol is set up, anybody would pass just about unless you have, like, brain damage that's visible, that's causing you to do certain things, crazy twitching or something like that. I don't know. Hey, that's the problem. So they're scrambling now because they know the protocol needs to be changed, but they also don't like what that means. If they truly change the protocol to what um, it probably should be, it'll look something like this. If a player shows those symptoms of concussion, just like Tua did, a minimum four weeks off a minimum four weeks out. That would be reasonable. That would be reasonable if you really care about a player's safety. That gives you one entire month to evaluate this player and make sure that there are no lingering issues. But what does that mean? The NFL will not go for that. They are going to try to figure this out in a friendly way because a, a top quarterback in the NFL just because of a little ding and he was a little thrown off out for four weeks, that ain't good for ratings. And it's not. Patrick Mahomes dings his head this weekend. He shakes it off. Four-week protocol? Josh Allen shakes it off. Four-week protocol? What about the, the last week of the regular season dinged up? Playoffs are here. Four-week protocol. The NFL ain't fooling nobody. They don't want no part of that. They don't want nothing that can put handcuffs on them. They would much rather the player make their own death-defying decision than them making it because that can hurt their pockets. And the issue that they have is the fact that every, anybody can pass a concussion test after getting concussed. Because concussions ain't got no symptoms. What's happening in your brain, 90% of it can't be read. And you talk about player safety, this is one area you can't keep them safe unless you keep them off the field. NFL ain't trying to hear that. that. That's ratings. Top quarterbacks out four weeks here, four weeks there. Just because they shook up on one play. And then the quarterback's going to lie. The quarterback's going, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. MRIs and CT scans do not show everything. Think about it. They tested Tua right after he was 
throwing fingers and was released from the hospital, we didn't see nothing. Point exactly. And they took all them tests. You mean to tell me a man out there, fingers crossing each other stiff, ain't, ain't going to have nothing on the test? Exactly. It don't show everything. It don't. Yeah, and they let him fly home. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. So that's what's going on. Tua right now is being a part of a political game. And I'm telling y'all now, they go, they done sat him this week. They already using language like, what did it with McDaniel say? You know, he's fine. We're just, you know, making sure we work through certain things with them. Hey, you, McDaniel don't even know what to say. Deep down inside, McDaniels want to say, man, what y'all want me to do? He done passed every test there is that they have. He say he fine. He say he ain't dizzy. He say he ain't blurry eyed. He say he just fine. What y'all want me to do? That's what McDaniel probably really want to say. But McDaniel, you know, he got he he's in he an NFL head coach. You got to play the game too. You got to. This is at the end of the day. Everybody's invested in the NFL success, the players, the coaches, everybody. That's how they, everybody get paid. So at the end of the day, I could tell you that two is out right now. You know, going past that, you know, I can't tell you anything. We just have to assess. Ain't nothing new. Ain't nothing changing. And then the NFL, they'll do something like this. They'll have a compromise. They'll be like, any players that's concussed, they have to be out a minimum of 12 days. That's it. See, that'll be their compromise. Instead of four weeks, they'll say something like, so, so it ain't one week. We don't want to make it seem like we don't care about the player and make it one week. We're going to make a 12-day concussion protocol. Why 12 days? Because you will miss one game. That's already the sacrifice we don't want to make. But, you know, after the one game, you'll be eligible to come back right before the, the next one. So we'll have you on the field. Give everybody, matter of fact, it's a good selling tool. Give everybody the suspense. You know, he's supposed to come out of the protocol on Friday. We don't know. Will he? Will he not? Uh, same old, same old. So I don't think two is going to be out more than this one week, two max. Jets and then Vikings maximum. I say just Jets, but Jets, Vikings, maximum. But I am not going to sit here and dismiss the possibility that the kid won't play for the rest of the season because the NFL might be using him to make a statement or something like four games or six games or something like that. Maybe using him to make a statement. And what the NFL will also do, this is and this is how they're gonna circumvent it. Even if they came up with the two game, three game, four game, this is how they're gonna circumvent it. They're gonna say any player that gets concussed on the field visibly, we're going to right away put them in the protocol and we're gonna let them get checked out on the tent. If they're a high value player, they'll probably say. The doctors determined in the tent he wasn't concussed, but we're going to take precaution anyway and sit him one week. <laughs> they go find so many different ways to circumvent it when they make their changes, man. So it is what it is. Tours on the shelf. Expect them back after the Jets or the or after the Vikings, or you won't may not see them all year. We don't know what they're going to how they're going to politicize this. Okay, so we'll leave that alone. Tours on the shelf now. Now that tour is on the shelf, it's next man up, ladies and gentlemen. Ain't no need to cry about it. Ain't no need to pout about it. It is what it is. We feel bad for the young man. We hope he gets better. Oh, we were sad when it happened. I was sad when it happened. I don't know about you. It kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I really felt for the kid. What I saw was scary, and I felt for his health, and I got emotional for the kid, okay? 
But at this th- point in the, of the matter, he's fine, according to everybody. Okay, it's time to move on. All right, no more crying tears. Uh, I ain't crying over spilled milk no more, okay? It is what it is. Two is out of the picture. It's time to talk about how we can win games. And next man up is Teddy Bridgewater. Y'all, some of y'all going to be mad at me. Some of y'all going to be mad at me on my take. Let me go and give me some green tea real quick. Need to fill my fridge back up when I get back. Some of y'all gonna be mad at me for my take. All right, Teddy Bridgewater. I'll be ragging on Teddy. Oh no, not Teddy. Oh no, all that, right? Listen, Teddy's gonna be just fine for us. Teddy is a good backup quarterback. Teddy is going to help us get wins or not help us get wins. I don't have a problem with Teddy backing us up and being the guy right now. He come out there and he's trash looking like Jacoby Brissett last year. That's a different story. We throw him to the wolves. It is what it is. But let me say this. Some of y'all are being very unfair to Teddy. Y'all starting this crap again. You did it with Ryan Fitzpatrick. You do it with every chance you get. Just to uplift Tua, you down everybody else. In that last game, I got people sitting there talking about Teddy looked so bad. He was so horrible. You are lying. You are lying. Outside of that interception, Teddy Bridgewater looked excellent. And I've gone back and I've even looked at the All-22 film. Teddy Bridgewater was making every throw, making some nice throws. Teddy Bridgewater made the big throw, even the Tyreek. Same fashion that two will be making it short, but it was still a catch. Teddy Bridgewater looked just fine. He was taking advantage of the intermediate. Matter of fact, we didn't do a lot of dinking and dunking with Teddy. I'll tell you that too. Teddy was taking advantage of all the opportunities they were giving him, and he commanded the offense, took us down there, scored the touchdown, and looked real good. Even on the interception drive, looked great taking us down the field. And some of y'all out here want to, oh, my God, I can't go with Teddy. He looked so horrible in that game. Truth be told, he looked better than two in that game. The first drive of the game, Tua looked good. Opening drive as always. And truth be told, after that, Tua didn't look good. Tua threw three deep balls that all three of them almost got picked. And one of them did. Holding on to the ball. Tua did not look good after that first drive. Don't get me wrong. He looked flawless in the first drive. Let's get that straight. He looked flawless in the first drive. Tua looked like the GOAT in the first drive. But is that something new to us? All last year, in the first drive, we all knew two was going to score on the first drive. I mean, it was a running joke. We know in the first drive, we good. We always scored in the first drive. We always went down the field in the first drive because they work on the first drive every single day in practice. And right after that first drive, truth be told, Tua had another quarter and a half of, I don't want to use the word trash, bad play. Bad play. And if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, when Teddy came in the game, he actually looked more effective than Tua did. Just in this game, I ain't talking about it as a quarterback overall. Just in that game versus the Bengals, Teddy was moving the ball. Matter of fact, I was mad at Mike McDaniel on the first drive because he decided to run, run, run the ball when Teddy first came in. And that's when we punt it right away. Tua looked bad versus the Bengals because he was hurt, back and ankle. Ain't nobody want to hear that. We don't make them excuses. We were we not allowed to make them excuses for Buffalo's secondary that was hurt or Baltimore's secondary. 
So so if we're going to tell Buffalo we don't want to hear those excuses, then we don't want to hear nothing about Tua playing hurt because I don't want to hear nothing about Tua playing hurt. He didn't look hurt in that first drive. The one he practiced all week. What, injuries only show up after the first drive? Get out of here with that mess. Get out of here with that mess. See, you keep doing it. You do whatever you can to elevate Tua and down other people. That's what y'all do. And you don't have to. You don't have to do that. But Teddy looked just fine. And then people, oh, he looked terrible. I can't do Teddy. Teddy was brought here to, to, to not be a Jacoby Brissett. He was brought here to not be a Jacoby. Does that mean he ain't going to make mistakes? No. But Tua make mistakes. Tua make mistakes. Tua can have three interceptions every game, if we honest. He almost had two versus Cincinnati if Tyreek didn't bail him out on one. Everybody going to make mistakes. Now, is Teddy Tua? No. But Teddy can look great in this offense. You know why? Let me tell y'all something that y'all feel to realize. This is the most quarterback-friendly system there is. This is the most quarterback-friendly system there is. Always a heavy offensive line with great protection because you're using the tight ends. So you don't usually have as much pressure as most quarterbacks that can spread it out. Like I'm looking at the Rams right now. Five guys on the O-line. Ain't no double tight end set. Two to the right, two to the left, and a running back on Stafford Hill. Not us. Not us. We will rarely see empty. On 90% of our plays, there's going to be a tight end or two on that line of scrimmage. This is a quarterback-friendly system. Two-man routes, three-man routes. Rarely do we run four- and five-man routes. And the, four and the fourth and fifth guy may sneak out late in the offense. This is a remedial system that as long as you do your job, it's not going to make you look like a superstar, but it can make you look effective. Let's get that straight, ladies and gentlemen. This offense is built to make you look comparable. This offense is built to make any quarterback look comparable, but you cannot look like a superstar in this offense typically. That's how it works. You're going to run the ball even if you can't run the ball sometimes. And you're going to play action even if it doesn't matter. It's, it's a system that is easy for the quarterback. It gives you time to think. It gives you two options. When, when you send the guy in motion, you look at the defense to see if they're in zone or man. And if they're in – let me tell you all how basic this offense is. Sometimes you'll have two receivers to the right and one to the left, right? in a double tight end set, in an empty. Just say, right? This offense is so simple that this is what it does. I want y'all to pay attention to it. This offense sometimes breaks the field in half, okay? So we'll send a guy in motion. If the quarterback sees man coverage, he's, his first read is on the left side of the field because I got my man beating, beating routes over here and my curl to get around. If, it, if they're in zone based off of the motion, my first read is over here because I got my crosser that's going to be coming through the zone and the guy coming underneath it so the linebacker has to choose. So that's all Tua and Teddy them going to be doing. They're going to send a guy in motion, man coverage. All right, I know who my first read is over here. I ain't even worried about over there on this play. Why do you think most of the time when they run plays, we be watching the film and we be like, man, this man was wide open over here. He ain't never looking over there. This office is basic. This all, hey, he read man, you look over there. He read zone, you look over there. Basic. This is a remedial offense, but it can be effective. As long as you're making sure that you run the ball um, enough times to get it, get the respect, and if you got deep threats, people got to respect it. They have to respect it. 
But these are the, also the type of offenses that can struggle in the playoffs when they scheme directly against your guy. Take away all the deep stuff and man-to-man bump and run early on. And if you can run the ball, you beat us. If you can't, you ain't getting nothing today. So Teddy can run this offense just like Tua. And here's the sad thing about it. People are going to get mad. If Teddy go out there putting up 300 yards and, and two or three touchdowns and one pick, I don't want to hear it. Because I don't already seen people in, 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 the, in the comment sections, oh, if Teddy look good in this offense, they're going to say, oh, well, this offense is good, not too well. Nobody cares about that. We Everybody knew coming in this is a quarterback-friendly offense. Commentators every week we play say it. This offense is built to make you look comparable, not a superstar. Teddy will be fine. Now, we have to rely on Teddy right now. It's a little reckless to go with Skyler right now. Skyler has no NFL experience in the pros. Everybody says, well, still, we need to find our quarterback for the future. Teddy's just a bridge anyway. Well, uh, we're not giving up hope on two, are we? We're not giving hope up on Tua. If they bypass all that concussion stuff, he'll be back. So that's the guy who we've devoted this season to invest in seeing if he could be our future. Not Skyler. Skyler's a project that we hope works out and it becomes an amazing thing for us. Who knows? Skyler said today he plans on being an NFL starter at some point. Maybe you'll get your shot. But right now, this season is devoted for Tua Tagovailoa to determine whether or not he's a franchise quarterback. So Teddy needs to come in because we still got Super Bowl or playoff aspirations, right? So since we have those aspirations, we need the best chance for us to win right now until Tua gets back. And Skyler may be the best chance to win, but we can't just take that assumption off of a preseason. Skyler is, Skyler is going to get his chance if the universe says he's going to get his chance. If Teddy Bridgewater gets hurt and Skyler has to come out, he gets his chance. But unless that happens, I told y'all Skyler was going to be on the shelf the whole year. They plans ain't to have Skyler now. If they have to, then so be it. But that ain't the plan. The plan was to sit Skyler, no longer pay Teddy Bridgewater next year. Skyler's the number two. And if Tua get hurt, that kid going to have a shot to possibly win the job. Skyler is all about next year. Go to camp, compete with Tua. Tua's still the starter, but compete with them. And then when the regular season starts, if he gets hurt, steal a job if you can. If you can't, you can't. It's that simple. But you can't do that right now as paying Teddy Bridgewater what you're paying him. You brought him in for this reason. Teddy has a right to earn his incentive money by playing, and he's going to be in there. He's going to be making the best of his situation, and who knows? Teddy might look amazing. Teddy might play great. Teddy might ball out. And if Teddy relinquishes that position to Skyler, because I'm going to tell you all now, if Skyler goes and Skyler balls out, and Skyler looks like an NFL quarterback and look like a starting quarterback. Let me tell y'all now, when it comes to camp next year, it's Skyler's job to lose. Because if Skyler has an opportunity this year and he balls out, the Dolphins will not pick up to his fifth year option. They're going to wait and, and, and absolutely have to pay him to have to pay him. This is why Tua wants to play. Tua don't not want to be out there. Let me use his words. I don't not want to be out there. <laughs> Tua, don't want, Tua wants to be out there. Tua knows good and well. I know I can't miss more than two weeks. I can't. Because boy, oh boy. Especially, in, in a matter of fact, Tua also better hope that we're winning while he's out. Because if we're not winning while he's out, some people think that's a plus for him because that makes him more valuable why you need him. 
but it actually hurts him because you're out. This is why we're losing. You're out. And every year, you're out. And we lose when you're out. And it's actually a bad thing. People trying to find a positive in that, well, that's why you need them. No, because you can keep them and give them $100 million. That ain't going to change the fact that every year, he's out. Every year, he's out. That don't make him more valuable because we lose games while he's out. Just like Jimmy Garoppolo, believe it or not, they like Jimmy G. But he he out. He be out too much for them. I understand trying to flip it to a positive. But y'all got to understand, if we miss the playoffs again by one game, and while he's out, we lost every game, and when he come back, we win again, and we missed the playoffs by one game, that's it for Tua. That's three years in a, in a row. That's three years in a row. His durability. So if you believe if Tua played the games that we were out, we would have made the playoffs, then that's a knock on him. Because he ain't never available. We ain't getting ahead of ourselves. Some of us just see it before the others. Some of y'all just behind. Don't say I'm getting ahead of myself. Some of y'all just behind. Some of these things are clear as day writing on the wall. Your best ability is availability. And truth be told, forget the concussion. He was already dealing with a back and an ankle injury. What was next? Y'all worrying about a concussion. He might come out there and hold my ribs again. How many games he missed last year from ribs? How many games he missed last year from ribs? You think you think they worried about worried about Herbert's injury because he playing through it? <laughs> he he playing through it, pain and all. Or maybe that was Flores. Maybe that was Flores. Maybe Flores held him back and sabotaged him. <laughs> maybe, maybe right. But it was about four games he was out. It was four games. I mean, we include the Buffalo game because he only played, what, four snaps? <laughs> At the end of the day, no matter whether you like to or not, it ain't no secret. The man is fragile. The man is fragile. He was hurt since week one. He's just been trying to manage it. He is fragile at this point. He's just fragile. And now you add concussions on top of that. Oh, Lord. Oh. That's a whole different ball game. Forget worrying about if he going to get up without it. Like, be honest. Be honest, Dolphin fans. We got 500 people in here right now. Be honest with me when I ask you this question. Be honest with me when I ask you this question. We have played four games now. Two or three and a half. Be honest when I ask you this question. Every time Tua go down, do you hold your breath ever since week one? Yes or no? Every time he go down, you do you side out like, uh, oh, is he uh, okay, okay, he all right. Yes or no? Yes or no? Be honest. Please be honest. And, and, and maybe I'm different than y'all, but for me, yes. Every time he go down, I'm like, oh, okay, he all right. If you got to do that, there's a problem. If you worried about every hit he take, whether he going to get up or not, there is a problem. And it ain't a good one. Yeah, touchdown 49ers. They had a toss and a cutback lane run. 
And I want the 49ers to lose. I want that good draft pick, man. Come on, Rams. Get y'all act together. I'm just saying, y'all. So listen, two is on the shelf. Teddy's going to be fine for us. Skyler is for the future. And if the kid get his opportunity sooner, man, I'm telling y'all, you better hope this kid don't ball out in this quarterback-friendly system. Because if he go out there looking just like Tua, or if not better, if he go out there throwing deep balls to Tyreek in stride instead of having to slow down and come back and make it a jump ball, and he go out there putting up points and putting up yards, and he and he it protects the ball well enough, I'm going to tell you now, if he look exactly like Tua, they going to look to make that man a starter somehow in the near future. Why? Because he also got the height to where he ain't just got to rely on passing lanes to see. He got the cannon of an arm. So he ain't got to sit here and do it all with timing. Y'all remember, y'all know that's been the message lately. Tua has limitations, so how he can win is with impeccable timing. That's a compensation for something you don't have, a cannon. So what you got to do is anticipate so you can hurry up and get the ball out far so that it still looks like a deep ball in stride. But quarterbacks with cannons ain't got to anticipate as much because they see it, regardless of how far it is, let's get it down there. So what people don't want to happen, at least people who want to see Tua as our franchise quarterback, you don't want Skyler coming in there looking just as good, but at the same token, he may not be as fragile, even though he had a shoulder injury in college. But that's all we know about. But has a cannon, tall, arm strength. The truth about um, Skyler is what you got to watch out with him is you still have to see him on a pro level read defenses and see how that looks. You also need to see in Skyler sometimes, like Skyler's weird in this fact, and I saw it all camp. When Skyler throws the wet ball away, y'all, he throws it in the field of play. It's a weird thing. Like he'll throw it away, but in the field of play. And sometimes people can make a play on it. And you can't have reckless picks like that. Quick question, TD. Don't mean to steer off topic, but is the promo for sign up only? Or if I already have an account, can I use it for sign up only? First time. Well, it's your first deposit. Your first deposit, bro. So if you signed up, but you haven't deposited, then it still counts for your first deposit. I'm still sold on Tua. His ability is clear when he is out there versus when Teddy is. Tua's health is the um, thing about him. Best ability is availability. See, this is what I don't understand, though. You said his ability is clear when he is out there versus when Teddy is. So hold on. Teddy goes out there for one series in the Buffalo game. Yeah, he looked a little shook, but that's one series, right? Then he comes out there this week, and he looked absolutely phenomenal with the exception of one interception. He looked phenomenal, and it's clear to you his ability is better than Teddy when he out there. Did you not remember how Tua looked out there on that field versus the Bengals after that first drive? Take the first drive away. Do you not remember how Tua looked at in the next two, three drives? TD, Teddy did not look phenomenal. Man, some of y'all, some of y'all just need to stop. He looked phenomenal. He looked phenomenal. If Teddy did, if Tua did what Teddy did when he came in, y'all be like, oh my gosh, this is GOAT level play. That's what y'all would have been doing. It's exactly what y'all would have been doing. Kills me, man. And then on top of it, Teddy put up even better stats during his time. Makes no sense. Anyway, man, um, 
Let me pick, pick this off real quick. Why is that on here? But like I said, y'all can go ahead and diminish what Teddy was doing on the field. You can diminish what he was doing on the field. Teddy has been what? TD, he was average, bruh. But that one interception caused the game. Oh, so Teddy's interception caused the game, but two was didn't. Really? Teddy's interception caused the game, but two was didn't. And at least Teddy got us down there on his drive when he threw it. That makes no sense. Don't forget, Tua threw a deep ball interception. Then he came back on the next drive, threw a deep ball that should have been picked if Tyreek didn't get his fingers on it. And we end up putting the ball. And on the next drive, holding on to the ball too long, looking for a deep one again. And then, oh, somebody coming. Y'all got to stop, boy. See, this is, this is the problem I be having. This is what makes me sound like a Tua hater. Because y'all always diminish other people to uplift him. And I got to balance the scales by telling the truth, pointing out the obvious. And then it makes me look like I'm honing in on what Tua did wrong. I don't care who played QB as long as we win. I agree. Definitely agree. I love you, man. But if Teddy was a phenomenal, as you claim, your reaction to his play in real time said otherwise. I'm just saying he's all right. No, my reaction when he was first coming in the game said otherwise because I didn't believe in it. But as you watch me in my live reaction, I was excited. Okay, Teddy made a throw. Hey, Teddy, ain't nothing there. Throw it away. Ooh, okay, good. He threw it away. Let to fight another one. Ooh, Teddy with a nice throw. Come on, y'all. That's what my reaction was. I was actually shocked at how well he was playing. And then I blew a gasket when he threw a pick like I would do with any quarterback. Like I would do with any quarterback. But up to that interception, Teddy Bridgewater actually played phenomenal. And a matter of fact, truth be told, he gave us a chance to win. It's no different from Ryan Fitzpatrick when he came in, uh, when he played that Seattle Seahawks game. I remember that one too. No different from when he played that, um, was it the Denver game? Came in, lit it up, gave us a chance to win, and we couldn't get it done. Hey, TD, honestly, this is scary for Tua because if Skyler gets in and balls out, then it's going to look really bad for them to keep Tua. No, no, no. This is what y'all got to understand. No matter what, if Skyler balls out, they're going to keep Tua. They're just going to have both of them in camp next year. And truth be told, they may still start Tua, see if they can get the maximum out of him. And if he balls out, they may they may have good trade um, value for him. If he doesn't, it's just clear indication and verification to the rest of the fan base. We're moving on with Skyler. I think Tua is going to be in this in a Dolphin uniform next year. Excuse me, unless they make some type of big move for Lamar or something. Otherwise, I think Skyler actually allows Tua to be in a Dolphin uniform next year. Because that's what the competition is going to be. That's what the debate is going to be. When Skyler's getting number two reps in training camp, him and Tua, trust me, it's going to be a big conversation. And Tua will still be the guy. But now it will officially be his job to lose. Because if Skyler had this opportunity now, the Teddy opportunity, see, we know that Teddy ain't auditioning to be our starter long term. But if Skyler was number two right now, boy, oh boy, it'll be on and popping. It'll be on and popping. If Teddy wasn't a Dolphin right now and Skyler was the number two from the get-go, right now, two is out, it would be on and popping. 
let Skyler go out there and put 400 yards, four touchdowns. It's going to be so funny. He played the Jets. <laughs> That's what they're going to start saying, boy. I'm telling you, it's going to go bad from there, boy. It's going to get bad. The excuses and everything going to get bad. <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Oh. <laughs> but luckily, that ain't the case. Luckily, that's not the case. All right. Um Sala, it's okay, man. I must be hurting your feelings with this talk. Oh, man, please, no jet slander. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's what they'll say. Even if Teddy go out there and put up over 300 yards and three touchdowns, I mean, he played the Jets. He played a good game, but it was the Jets. It ain't like you was Buffalo. It ain't like you was the Ravens. <laughs> The Ravens just proved it. them and Buffalo. Ain't none of them can be trusted. If you watch that game, the Ravens are prone to blowing leads. That's what that told you. And Buffalo trash to begin with by even allowing them to go down that much to start the game. Point period blank. But I'm telling you now, y'all better be lucky Teddy here. Because if Teddy wasn't here in this scholar time, oh boy. It will, boy, y'all better hope Skyler fall on his face. <laughs> you better hope. And you know what's sad about it? You know what's sad about it? If Teddy wasn't here in the Skyler time, they'll never admit it, of course. But low-key, you know how many of these Dolphin fans would be hoping on Skyler's demise? You know how many of them would be wishing Skyler fails? You know how many every time he throw a pick or something, they'd be like, see, this man trash, get him out of here. They'll overinflate that how trash he is just to make sure that he don't look as good as Tua. That's the sad part about it. So many Dolphin fans because they wish that upon Teddy now and they, and they already diminishing any good things Teddy's done. It's sad. No, a secret. They hate in chat right now. <laughs> uh, I don't know who timed you out, Night Wolf. I'll look into it because I got a thing now that can tell me because it looks like I'm going to have to replace some of my mods. They getting a little out of hand. Um, I'll look into it, bro. When I hear Teddy, I think Carolina and Denver Teddy, not good. You're making valid points, though, making me feel better about Teddy under center. This ain't the same system that Teddy was in. This is a quarterback-friendly system. This is a quarterback-friendly system. Teddy is poo, TD. Stop the cap. Then Tua is poo. You don't think this quarterback-friendly system can help Teddy's game and make him look better? It already has. The man put up 200 yards in two quarters. That ain't bad. That ain't bad at all. So let's see what he do versus the Jets. And the sad thing is, if Teddy go out there, like I said before, if he go out there and put up numbers, y'all going to try to diminish this man and say it was the Jets. Y'all hoping Teddy failed, some of y'all. Hoping that he looks bad. So you could sit here so you could say how much we need to him. Real Dolphin fans. Real Dolphin fans. Teddy is a bottom 25 QB. Maybe, but in this system, he might be a top 15. In this system, he might be a top 15. I don't know. He about to have his chance. He might look like trash. And if he look like trash, y'all going to come back talk about CTD, what you talking about? Look at this man looking like trash now. I'm just saying, he might look like trash. I'm not saying he's going to be great. But let's see what he look like in this system, this quarterback-friendly system. 
Our system not that good, TD. You wild. I'm not sure what you talk about. Every time we throw the ball, there's a wide open receiver. So what's not good in our system when it comes to that? Please tell me. Tell me what's not good in our passing system when there's a wide open quarterback every time, wide open receiver every time we throw the ball. You need me to pull up two is all 22? Completion, wide open, completion, wide open, completion, wide open. Tua had 25 completions in a game, and five of them were tight coverage. And that's a fact. We'll quickly point out, look at that pass to Jaseki across the middle. Look at that one to Waddle. Oh, it's easy to identify the three or four passes that were tight, but sit here and ignore the other 22 that were wide open. This system is a great system for quarterbacks. TD, the fans don't want to admit that Skyler is just as good as Tua. Well, we don't know that. We we honestly don't know that. With some people, we can make assumptions. But um, Skyler has to prove it on a pro level. We don't know that. We need, He need to get it out. Skyler might come out there and throw eight picks. Get, oh boy, I almost said cursed. Um, get you behind on the bench, <laughs> but we don't know. You know that's what I'm saying. These are the moments. You know, Tua has to be lucky that we do have Teddy because if Skyler comes in and rips it up and tears it up and looks good, then that's an issue. But he ain't got to worry about that. He's being replaced by a guy who ain't fighting to be our franchise quarterback anyway. He's a he's the new Ryan Fitzpatrick of the league. He's gonna be a journeyman for years to come. It's just what it is. We don't know. We'll find out about Skyler. Defense needs to be better, period. I agree. But Byron, hopefully, we don't even know if Byron will be back. Time shall tell. Anyway, man, I got to get up out of here, y'all, because I have to go pick up um my father-in-law, my sister-in-law um from the airport. Again, we're having the baby in the morning. So, um. Well, tomorrow around um, noon or something like that, we're having a baby. So um, I got to get up out of here. Again, while I'm bored in the hospital at times, I'm going to check in with y'all, talk to y'all, chill with y'all, chop it up, you know the usual, um, if I can, all right? But um, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm about to get up out of here. Uh, appreciate y'all so much, man. And thank y'all for all the support to me and my family. Those who donated in the cash app and did all of that stuff, man. It was overwhelming for my wife. We love. We thank y'all. We got everything the baby needs, you know, and everything y'all been donating. We just been stacking up extra diapers and extra stuff like that. The stuff that people need long term. So thank y'all so much. Um, we appreciate everything y'all do for us. And um, I'm about to sign out and y'all pray for us tonight. Um, you know, health, healthy um, deliveries tomorrow. And fins up no matter what. And tomorrow we'll have baby girl. Love y'all, man. Peace. Titty is out. Woo! Teddy time. Ah, QB1, Teddy.